Hi, welcome back to Daniel Stark World on YouTube Medium and Daniel Rosal.tech. So for today's video, I thought I would uh, just quickly uh, make one about um, Arander, and Arander is a uh, basically GUI for uh, Xrander. So if you're new to the whole world of um, Ubuntu, um, then this is an interesting tool for getting your monitors monitors the way you want them. So this what you're looking at here is LXDE. I have Redshift running um, a blue light manager. If the screen looks a little bit red, uh, that's what that is. Um, but basically, this is the tool you want to use for configuring your monitors. So I just want to kind of show how to get this set up and how to get it run, what you can do with it and get it running automatically on boot, that kind of thing. So basically, uh, your options are pretty straightforward. Uh, if you go into the outputs tab, this is this it'll show you what you have to work with so I have the GT GT 730 GE4 graphics card and uh, I don't have all the monitors connected to it all the outputs I think the limits actually four uh, so I could put one more monitor in but I have three monitors connected um, if you have uh, integrated graphics and um, a GPU a dedicated uh, graphics card then in my experience it only shows you the outputs for the uh, graphics card, but it'll show you whatever you have available and connected unless there's some problem with your graphics card at the driver level. But if everything's working okay, you should get all your outputs uh, through this nice little GUI. So as you can see, I have a DVI-D connection. That's DVI-D0, HDMI 0, HDMI 1, and what I do not have connected right now is uh, a third HD, a third HDMI port, um, and uh, two um, Display Link ports here. That's DP. So um, in terms of what I have, so when you click on your screens, it'll arrange them. This it's arranged them because I have a script um, saved, and basically you can see that I have. Um, you can go into the resolution and set it to whatever you want it to be. These are uh, 1920 monitors, so I've got them at their full resolution. And one cool thing you can do, uh, just to point out, is uh, if you want to use, so I have these on a, um, this is what you're looking at in uh, in real life or something still like it. My desk has upgraded a bit since this video. But, um, so you, I have these three screens on a visa mount and I can just turn, physically rotate, uh, you know, this screen, let's say 90 degrees to the left. And what I would do in that case is just go into the orientation option here and uh, move that over to the left, uh, I think. Uh, somet you have to, sometimes you have to play around with this. Uh, the right looks more logical, but I think it's actually the left. Um, and then you can do that. So basically, once you have your options here, um, you know, uh, according to how you want them to be, and don't forget to mark one of them as your primary display also. But once you have your options or, you know, created a few different configurations, then you can just go ahead and basically uh, save a file and to do this you go into layout and then you click down into save as so I just did that and uh, now I have this uh, bash script called three screens dot sh so I'm just gonna have a look at what it's given out to me and just explain um, the logic at work here so this is X render and this is basically all um, your a render is actually doing it's just a really basic uh, graphical front end to it so you can see just something interesting. The way it lays it out in the script is it goes DVI 0, and look at this on the right, then HDMI 1, and then HDMI uh, 2 as being off. Um, but So in terms of what's on, DVI 0, then HDMI 1, um, it's got, actually got everything that's off. DPI 0 off, DPI 1 off, um, and then finally we should have somewhere here, HDMI 0, it's here. So basically, it's uh, saying if you take DVI D0, it's uh, the output, and I'm I'm basically explaining this just to, because this this little utility actually teaches you how to use XRender if you want to go down that route and just do this manually. Um, if you look at DVI D0, for instance, minus minus output DVI D0 minus minus mode resolution. Now this is what I want to draw your attention to: minus minus pause for position, 1920 by zero. So this is this is a 1920 screen. And therefore, everything here is being measured from the left and from the top, like where my cursor is. So this screen is 1920 pixels across to the left and zero pixels up or down in terms of the offset. So its offset is therefore 1920 by zero. 
HDMI 1's offset is, if we find HDMI 1 somewhere here, is 0, 0, as it says here. HDMI 0's offset is 3840 times 0, and 3840 is just 1920 multiplied by 2, because we have 1920 and another 1920, and therefore this screen is 3840 pixels positively offset from the left. So that's basically all you, all this utility is doing is it's giving out these bash scripts um, just with all the details of how you want your monitor set up. And final thing to show is you can actually then go into how to get this running. So you want to um, you know basically have this when your computer turns on you want it to put your screens the way you want them to be put. And what you can also do is you know you can keep a few config files on the desktop. So what I might do is uh, you know, save another file with, as I said, the kind of interesting vertical monitor, uh, save that to the desktop. And if I want to uh, go into vertical monitor mode, I just need to basically click a button. And if I want to go back, I can just click another button. And by button, I'm clicking on the bash script. And you can even go so far as actually to obviously um, uh, as I showed in another video about OpenShot, you can actually map these onto uh, keys on your keyboard. So if you have a few spare macro keys, you could literally have different screen layouts on a macro key and just uh, you know program the macro key to call up the bash script. So it's actually pretty cool uh, what you can do. But to just to just to, you know have stuff running on boot, what you would need to do is just. Um, basically put the path to the script into this auto start so you can right click here and do copy path and just see what I guess right so that's the path and then you just need to have the path as in uh, put that into your auto into your auto start list so this is my auto start you, you have as you can see manual auto started applications and uh, here you go here's the one I actually use home Daniel dot screen layout that's the default hidden uh, folder that it stores all the screen layouts in and I just have it called default sh uh, but I could just drop this guy in here home daniel desktop three screens dot sh and I'm now going to go ahead and remove it um, and you can also by the way if you want to have if you want to play around with a couple of layouts just you can keep them all and you just need to untick this and uh, you can see what it's actually doing is adding a uh, comment in the actual uh, file this is just another GUI um, and then if you, you know, you can just play around with a couple of toggles on startup and if you really decide you don't like it, then you can just get rid of it from the auto start. So that's it guys. Hope this uh, video about using a render has been useful. Uh, it's a very, very simplistic front end for X render, but there's no, reason, there's no reason to make things complicated and there's no limit either. You can see I can configure a beautiful five six or even an eight monitor array if i really wanted to just using this as long as they had enough outputs that were recognized by the system uh there isn't you know that's not basically a constraint so uh it may may be simplistic but it can actually be a very powerful tool for just kind of managing the display of uh, impressive multi-monitor workstations the type of things that day traders might use or people you know, working in banks and stuff like that. So hope this video has been good for interesting for somebody and uh, anyone wants to get in touch can, as always, uh, reach out to me through danielrosal.com with two L's in Rosal uh, or write me an email by writing to youtube at danielrosal.com until the next video.